Hi! Welcome back! In a previous video, we learned about Panda's operations. These are the topics that we covered in that video. If you haven't watched it yet or are interested in learning more about these concepts, I'd suggest you check out that video as well. In this video, we're going to be exploring how to create plots using matplotlib, which is another Python library. In my very first intro video to this Python for Machine Learning series, I introduced matplotlib and basic features of that. So if you aren't familiar about what matplotlib is, I'd suggest you check out that video. So in this video, we're going to be exploring how to create X and Y arrays, how to um, use basic matplotlib commands, how to set X and Y labels and titles. We'll also learn about the object oriented method of creating plots and then how to learn um, or how to create subplots and how to work with them. Let's jump right in. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is import numpy as np. Um, and we also want to import uh, matplotlib this time. This one is not just going to be import matplotlib. We're going to have a little extra. So it's going to be matplotlib.pyplot um, as plt. And then after this, we want one more line of code um, to ensure that we can see the plots in the Jupyter notebook. For other notebooks, you can use plt.show at the end of the commands to have the figure show in another window. But if you're using Jupyter, then you want to have um, a percent sign, um, matplotlib in line. And this is going to, um, as I said, ensure that you see the plots um, underneath your commands. So um, as always, as with any graph, we want x and y axes. So for this, we're going to um, define x as np.arrange with a 10 inside. Um, and this is basically just going to be um, a numpy array of 0 through 9. And then for y, we're just going to multiply x times 2. So this is just going to be every element times 2. So now that we have an x and a y, we're going to use some basic matplotlib commands to show this plot. So this is just going to be plt.plot, and we want to plot the y versus x as it says in the doc string. So to do this, we're just going to say x comma y, and this is going to plot, um, it's going to output a graph where we have a line that um, connects these x and y's, as you can see. And the um, scales are all correct, and the values are correct as well. So um, what we want to do next is we want to see how to get rid of this top portion. And so to do that, it's just a very simple line right after, which is going to be plt.show. So what we're going to do here is we're going to retype plt.plot and then x and a y. But under that, we're going to have um, another command that says plt.show, which will basically, it's kind of like um, print versus like not printing. Um, if, we, if we have print and then we have a string versus if we just have the string, um, same type of uh, scenario. So we have that. Um, next, we're going to see how we can set x and y labels as well as a title. So we're going to, again, say this plt.plot and an x and a y. Um, and then underneath, we're going to say plt.xlabel. Um, and then parentheses, we need a string that indicates what x, um, what string we want in the x label, which is the x axis. And we could do the same thing for y. So basically, just copy and paste and then replace the x's with a y. Then we can set the title by saying plt.title, and then we can just have whatever string we want for the title. And finally, plt.show, so that it can output a nice graph. So we see the same graph, but with an x-axis um, label, y-axis label, and a title. So um, now what we want to do is use an object-oriented method um, to create plots, which is basically instead of saying plt dot, um, which is the generic command, we want to have um, a specific object of this plt so that we're able to kind of customize it even more and add some extra layers to it. Um, so what we're going to do to to create this object oriented is um, we're going to have a variable called plot in which we're going to store plt.figure. Um, and what this is going to do is uh, it's going to allow us, it's going it, to, it's basically um, our model of, of the graph and we have to set some axes based off of this um, object that it's created now, which we can say by um, doing axplot equals p plot dot add axes and then um, the, the inside the parameter um, we have this list of numbers where the first number indicates um, the left, um, the, the second number indicates the width, 
or sorry, the bottom third number indicates the width and the fourth number indicates the height. But this will make much more sense um, in a moment when we put a plot inside of a plot and we'll see kind of what this canvas is um, talking about. But just remember that what's in the parentheses has to be between zero and one. But as I said, it'll become much more clear in just a second. So now what we're, we're gonna do is, oh yeah, and then just make sure that's an equal sign. Um, and now what we're gonna do is um, set some X and Y labels. Or first um, plot it using X and Y, and then we're gonna set some labels. So the only difference here is that instead of just saying um, dot x label, it's going to be dot set x label. That's the differentiating factor between the two. Um, and we're going to set that as x axis and then do a similar thing for the y axis. And then we're also going to set the title by saying set title. Um, and that'll be the only difference between the two. So now we can output this and see how it looks, and it looks pretty good. So we have the x-axis, the y-axis, the title, and our um, graph. Um, and it's a little bigger than our last one because of this um, dimension of the axes, which is why it's helpful to use object-oriented because we can really s make it more specific to what we want. So for example, if we decrease the last one, which is the height, um, by half, then it's going to kind of like smush it together um, because it's, it's cutting the height by half. Similarly, if we do the third one, which is indicating the um, width, it's going to cut the width by half. So it's becoming smaller, as you can see. Um, so basically, the, the parameters indicate how big our canvas size is going to be. So the next thing we're going to do is create a plot inside of this plot to see how that works. So we're just going to copy and paste this whole thing. And wherever it says axe plot, we're going to change that to axe plot 2 um, because we need to have the variables be different. Um, and then here we're going to have x-axis 2, y-axis 2, and then title 2. And then the final thing we're going to do is um, we're going to change the size to make it smaller and inside. So 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, and 0.5. And you'll see in a minute what this means. So as you can see, it kind of moves inside. And how we got it inside was because the first one we changed to 0 0.2, which means that it's going to move 0 0.2 to the, to the right. And then um, the, the bottom is going to move 0 0.2 up. And then 0.5 is it's going to be half of half the width of the original and half the height of the original. Um, and so we can kind of like play around with this a little bit. So if we kind of change this to zero, it's going to smoosh it to the left because it's not going to move to the right um, any amount. We have this as zero. It's going to be all the way towards the bottom. Um, and then similarly, we can play with this. So this one's going to um, make it really wide because it's not going to cut the width in half. And this one, if we make this also one, it's just going to totally overlap, which is why it's throwing a little bit of a warning because we're um, just basically using the same graph but overlapping, um, which serves no purpose. So, so um, that's just a little warning, but this is how or what the parameters for the axis size means. Um, and finally, we're going to learn how to create subplots. So subplots are helpful if we want to create many um, plots on the same canvas so that we don't have to repeatedly create more and more um, canvases. So here we're going to use tuple unpacking to do this. Um, so that's going to be fig, which is figure, and then comma axes. You can specify whatever variables you want for those two, though. Um, and then plt subplots and rows equals two and calls equals two. You can say whatever you want for the number, but n rows stands for number of rows and call stands for number of calls. And since we set both equal to two, that's why we have two rows and two columns. So if we replace this with a five, then it's gonna output five rows and two columns, which is a little smushed in this case um, because we just have such um, kind of a lot of um, rows, but we can kind of customize this a little bit, which we'll look at in the next video actually. Um, and so the next video will also learn how to change the colors of the, um, of the plot and how to make it smaller, bigger, how to add markers and things like that. Um, but for now, let's do a quick recap of this video. So in this one, we learned we imported these new libraries um, and then we have an X and a Y and then we just plotted it. Um, then we set some X and Y axes and we use the object oriented method to create plots. Um, and then we saw how we could edit the axes and then how we could um, make the graph bigger and smaller. We ended with creating subplots. Well, that's it for now. 
If you've enjoyed the content in this video, make sure to give it a like and comment down below any questions you may have. I've also included a little activity in the description box that relates to the skills we learned in this video, so I welcome you to try that out as well. If you're new here, then make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos that'll help you on your journey towards mastering artificial intelligence. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.